Once again, thank you guys for coming out. Our Sunday thing, man. It's called Jamley Church. Ready? Yeah. I'll follow you. First recollection I had where it really hit me on a personal level, uh, it was my fourth grade teacher saying that I want you to lead the, you know, we would sing songs in class, I don't remember what songs, but she uh, said, I want you to lead the class. You have a big booming voice. And I still don't know whether that was an insult or a compliment, but, but it, it stuck. And I kind of, I guess it gave me some inner confidence that, you know, oh, I can sing, you know, I can sing. Well, you know, I've always, just like anybody, I guess, I've always kind of sang along to stuff. Cry when it's over, I know it, but I can't let go. My parents split up when I was young, so I really didn't have too much of any of the influence. But uh, in my teen, you know, in grammar school even, there were some kids in the neighborhood and, and playing music, so I kind of I kind of got the idea of, hey, you can make music. So I really didn't play music until I was 19, I guess. I guess the influence is really Bruce Springsteen and the Allen Brothers, right about the same time. They're the first concerts I went to. It kind of put in my head, even though I may not may not have known it at the time, and I was kind of like a blues guy. I was into blues, you know, that kind of, the stuff that kind of just hits you. The lyrics really didn't matter as much as just the music and the, and the passion that you could hear in that. The only thing I ever really could play was harmonica. I had a roommate in college who was a blues guy. That kind of got me into, oh yeah, that's what I like. You know, Clapton, all of others. He, you know, taught me how to play guitar so I could play rhythm along to him. But it just, it didn't, it didn't stick. Yeah. Grammar school. I wanted to play trumpet. My mom thought that it was too loud, <laughs> so she gave me a clarinet. I kind of, I guess I got a little proficient at it, but didn't, you know, the only thing that really hit me was harmonica. For some reason I picked it up and it was pretty easy for me. And I didn't mind that it's frustrating for a lot of people to play harmonica that are really true musicians. It's kind of why I guess some of them respect me, even though I feel like I'm just barely a musician, you know, but because they can't do the things that I kind of, through osmosis or just being patient, I got. That's my friend! Come on, Sandy, show them what you got. Most all the bends, or you're bending the note down. Overblows when you bend it up, but that's a, you know, like, yeah. you're bending it down. Well, that, uh, I was the first kid in the neighborhood that could figure out what he, how he did it, you know? I guess that kind of stuff, where you can figure out things on harmonica, he's like, wow, you know? Whereas most guys would just like give up, you know, and they smash it and throw, throw it in the ocean. I'm one of the weirder people I know. If you're weirder than me, then maybe we gotta like, you know, get you some help. <laughs> I really don't practice enough, man. I really don't. Um, and I, I get, you know, what's well, kind of, I guess, like riding a bike, you know, once you can do it, you can do it. But there are times when it's like, mm, yeah, what I'm thinking didn't come out, you know. And some other times when you're in that zone and everything, you're not even thinking, it's just flowing like everything and, and cool stuff just comes out, you don't have to think about it. You never want to play too much harmonica, that's where the players can make a mistake. Even John Popper doesn't play too much. I, I think myself as like a player coach. I'm like, and I have really good players, I want to make sure they, they you know, execute this play really well. And to me, that's my job. Get everybody to like be on the same page, play their best. And a lot of times there's some really magical stuff that happens here, you know, or at any, any game because of that. So yeah, I, I don't tell anybody how to play or, you know, I just encourage them to play their best and feel comfortable and, and know that, you know, we're going with the flow and it'll be all right.
You know, I look to um, a lot of people that are a lot smarter, a lot more insightful than, I, than I'm probably ever going to be as an inspiration. You know, Dalai Lama, any, any of the great philosophers or teachers. It's, it's just as much the people that come to the shows as it is the musicians, you know. It's almost like you're just having a party and everybody kind of is feeling the same thing. And they're into it and they're dancing, you know. And it's kind of like, yes, that's, that's what it's about. Now everybody! Sunday people, I've been doing this since 2011, and they're like, oh, dude, you know, we gotta have our Sunday. <laughs> I came here and I reached out to like, Josh. He gave me, I said, well, look, give me a few dates, because it's gonna take a while, probably. He gave me three dates. That's it. So far, I was guaranteed three dates, and it's a year and a half later, we're still going strong, so. <laughs> I actually played in Asbury Park when it was really bad. <laughs> but I lived in Asbury Park around 1980 or so when it was really bad. I mean, the pony was always there, we going, but you know, there wasn't much going on. I mean, there was a serial killer in town at some point around then, maybe 80s, I, I don't remember. You know, you didn't know until he was caught, but you know, he was living right like on, on 7th Avenue or something, you know. I mean, and, and the club I played was where Porta is now. Uh, it was called Student Prince. And I mean, I was on stage one night. It was with a band, Bank Street Blues Band, Southside Johnny, and you know, we were both kind of in that band. I see a guy, like, I see, like, I guess a fight right started. Guys like this with a knife and another guy like that. We just kept playing. <laughs> Which, you know, looking back, it was kind of funny, but not really. Woman, and I know the reason why. Cause in my way. That was before The Saint, you know, The Saint, I think, was in 94 when they came in. Um, so there was music, but yeah, it, it was really, I mean, the people complain about how, you know, sprawling or whatever you call it, the gentrification, I guess that's the word. But, yeah, but man, it wasn't so cool back then, you know. And I know the reason why.